Hello everybody, this is Android Gamer, and today the top 10 games I'm having is games that are on the PC. Uh, this, I've had I had the longest time trying to pick up the, the list for this one, unlike the other two uh, bef episodes before this, the text instrument and the Amiga, which were fairly easy to choose from, I had a difficult time trying to figure out how I was going to do this episode and this uh playlist or games list because there are so many games with PC and it's still going out and there's still so many good games but I had to go through the ones that I thought were my best at the time and even then I don't even think I, don't think I got it all right so bear with me and if there's any that you wanted to see in this list or thought that were better than the ones that were in my list, that's fine, that's your opinion, I said this is my opinion of the games I played during the time that I thought was the top 10. So, number 10 was, and I, with this I combined both of them together because both the Civilization series and the Colonization series were pretty much the exact same thing. I say Colonization was a series, I mean it had one game then had the successor to it where they updated the graphics to it, but I enjoyed both of them. I read with Civilization, I actually started in at Civilization 3, but both of them, same thing as turn based games where you are creating colonies from scratch and going all the way to the space race, which was the main final timeline or line for civilization where you have to get to Alpha Centauri first, it would be the nation that got there first. Uh, so it's good, you had a bunch of different um, nations that span the entire history of the Earth, from Egyptians to Americans to Russians and all that stuff. Whereas with colonization, it was a little bit different, which I still enjoyed actually feel like I enjoy colonization more than civilization, but with colonization you have the four main nations that colonize the, the New World, so England, France, uh, Netherlands, and the Spanish, and with that you come on the new land, you start building colonies, you inter interact with the natives, and <clears throat> interact with the other European nations and the end goal of colonization was to declare independence so you either become the, the next america or if you're the french you become new france or the netherlands new netherlands and so on um but yeah i enjoyed colonization a little bit more and i like the older version of colonization more than the remake because of the fact that with the new version uh, yes, you could go to the, the tribes more than once to train uh, your colonists to be experts in certain fields, but with your influence that expanded throughout, you start dwarfing and start killing off the villages, so in the end they didn't stay around that long, which was a bad thing because the villages also allowed you to have trade, so it allowed you to sell things or give things to the natives to make them happy and then stop attacking you. So all in all, both those game series were very good, um, but yeah, as I enjoyed colonization a little bit more. So moving on to number nine. <clears throat> number nine was Doom. Now I choose this one over any of the other ones that I played through, which was played Duke Nukem, I played Sh uh, Shadow Warrior, played Quake, and played all of them. But Doom is the one that everyone remembered hearing that music, playing it through, and they came out with the sequel uh, not too long ago with Doom that continued on the story of Doom Guy, and actually cemented the whole timeline of how he became what he was and why he, he what happened to him. Uh, so it was a very enjoyable game, uh, both the original and the sequel. I played more of the sequel than I did the original, but still, good games. Heavy paced, you're always running around, never, if you stopped, you're in trouble and all that stuff. So, yeah. Number eight. <clears throat> Number eight, when it comes up, was Command and Conquer. Now, I, 
It was really the series as a whole, but I enjoyed Red Alert a little bit more. I mean, Tiberian Sun was good. Renegade was okay. It was there. Wes Wood's first attempt at doing a first-person shooter. It had moments in this, but I enjoyed Red Alert a lot more than the whole in the whole series that came out with it because it was more nowadays. It was the U.S. and Russia and the Soviets and what would happen if uh, Einstein never joined the the Allies and never joined the U.S. What would happen there? What's the whole storyline with that? So, and the whole gameplay was good. It was a real-time strategy where there was no time to wait. You had to build and had to build quick and build your army quick because if you didn't, the enemy would have found you and take you out if they were bigger than you. So number seven. Number seven uh, is, and I should preface this because I only played two of the games of the whole series, but it's the whole Legacy of Cain series. It was really, really good. I came in at um, Soul Reaver 2, and Razel was still probably one of my most favorite characters of playing, and just the storyline within Legacy of Cain was amazing. And it was sad how they ended the Legacy of Cain in Defiance. I'm not going to spoil or say anything, but it just... It was really good. The storyline was great. The acting in it was amazing. They had a bunch of different people. They had the person... They had the guy who played Odo in Space Space Nine playing as Uranus Aldrin. And it was good with that. And just... The whole gameplay was amazing. It was sort of... Uh, top down, well not top down, but behind third person viewing and it was really, really good. Number six. Number six is StarCraft and this is the first of probably all, th I put in all three Blizzard games but in all different spots. Uh, but I put six below, or as the first, or StarCraft as the lowest one for now just because of the fact that not that it was a bad game, it's the same thing as Red Alert as Real Time Strategy. The story was amazing. I enjoyed playing with it or playing through it. Loved the character Tassadar and said that he sort of died off fairly early in the Protoss uh, uh, storyline, but still a good, strong out game. They have the sequel came out. I watched the video play of it and very good game and it also had online where you can go up against other uh, players and all that stuff so so number five as with Starcraft was with Warcraft and I show number two because I came through with number two first I played the demo for number one but Tried to find it and never could find it again, but so I remember to have played three, played uh, Warcraft Online, and it's the whole story of orcs and hero or orcs and humans, and during the time of you know fantasy, and they have dragons and griffins and all that stuff, and the story did advance itself quite a bit through three, or two and three, and online uh online it really took the story and just ran with it and made it into its own um but yeah warcraft was probably one of the better ones because everyone knew warcraft and played warcraft and the story was very gripping it was came out first before starcraft but which is why <clears throat> so number four Number four is Grand Theft Auto, and I'm lumping this in as a series, as the whole series, because obviously five is still out, I haven't played it yet, but I played the very first one, I heard of two, I played through all three games of three, um, or the different stories of three, the regular one, Vice City, San Andreas, I played a couple of the uh, stories, Liberty City story, and I forget the 
I think there's another one. Um, there's also a Chinatown one, which I've, I've never heard of until I've seen the title in the Google Play Store. But it's fun. It has, a, it has its own storyline. At the same time, if you want, you can just play the game. It's It was open world where you didn't have to play the game exactly as the storyline is. There was different sub-missions you could play through. There's different events and stuff that you can do. Um, so it's very enjoyable. And with 5 and now 6 coming out sometime soon, um, it's obviously one that everyone enjoys playing. It's number 3. Number 3 was Deus Ex. I enjoyed playing through Deus Ex. I was happy when it came out saying that was the game of the year, which, good reason, because it was the game that nobody knew was going to exist, but everyone enjoyed and wanted, because it was a futuristic... <clears throat> a futuristic uh, game where you were in the future and you, had, you were augmented human. And I think this is what brought about my, the Matrix in the gameplay and sort of idea where you could play with that. So you played as J.C. Denton and you played through and there's a whole story where you in essence became the messiah for the uh, um, <clears throat> artificial, artificial intelligence age and you played through and you had different characters that you could either save or let die or different ways to die and there was always a different way to play the game. There wasn't one set story line or one well there was that storyline but there wasn't <clears throat> you could play the game however you want if you wanted to be ruthless and goes in going guns blazing you could do that if you wanted to be more strategic and uh, sneaky you could do that as well which i try to do a lot and but there was always one finite part that i always want to try to do which was save uh, JC's brother Paul. When I found out that I could save him, I was like, okay, I'm going to make sure I try to find as much this um, ammo or dynamite and missile launches as I could. So when I got to the point where the man in black came to try to get Paul, I'd help Paul and fight the man in black with anything I had on my arsenal. Number two. Number two is Knights of the Old Republic, an amazing story. It was um, Bioware, which was came out with <clears throat> um, Baldur's Gate, which was a good game, uh, but Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic was the first game that they did and introduced us to the Old Republic. I mean, the, we, LucasArts was good and did well with the ones around the games and story around the movies that came out, but Knights of the Old Republic was the first one that gave us what the story was way back before Luke, way back before the Emperor, Emperor and the Empire and all that, and it showed us what the story gave became with the Jedi and the Sith. Um, very long, long game. I featured this on my channel way back in the day and tried to play through it and just, it's way too much of a beast to try to play through in this story. I mean, maybe I might try to do it again if there was some interest in it, but when they came out with the sequel, the sequel wasn't as great because, as with Deus Ex, this was a game that no one expected, but when it came out, it was amazing. It became a cult classic. It, everyone who's played Star Wars or heard Star Wars knows the Old Republic, and it was really enjoyable. And now some honorable mentions. So my first honorable mention is Heroes of Might and Magic, the whole series of that. It was a good turn-based game. I enjoyed the storyline that came out. Um, four, not so much, but three was definitely was a good story and continued on with the whole saga of um, the Queen and King Roland. I forget the Queen's name and the, even the 
the country that they're in, but it was very good turn-based game. The whole family enjoyed playing it and playing through the stories that came out and there's some sub quests that the sub stories that all sort of commingled into one big saga. So it was really good and entertaining. Gameplay was good. The sound was great. The graphics, some of the older ones, I don't think would fare that well today, but still. Next honorable mention is, yes, I have played The Sims, and yes, I am going to put it in here because it, it is one of the games that brought a genre on its own. It was originally Sim City, which is a simulation style game, but then they decided, okay, well, how about we just do people that you play out their lives, you play out a life of someone that you choose, and you give them to have get married, get a job, try to make ends meet, try to stay friends with all the people around you, also not get robbed, and to have family and all that. Yeah, it's come a long way <laughs> graphics-wise, and I think now it's up to the fourth or fifth Sims, and it has a couple of mobile versions of it as well. And yeah, all it is that you start, you either start as a full family or from, from the start, you can be single and try to marry one of the NPCs and go from there and just, yeah, a simulation of being a person. And my number one pick, I know there would be a lot of people yelling at me for this, but I'm going to choose Diablo. Because simply the fact, as I said, this is the my list of games I enjoyed playing out. And I enjoyed remembering being as now. Christmas time is the background, as you can see from a tree, that I remember playing with uh, my brother every Christmas. There was, you now this was what, the start of the age where developers were making it that you could not copy the games you because they had codes with them and the games required you uh, required the code and the and the individual code at that to be able to play it out however we found the hack that if you you could still copy the game <coughs> the game disk and start the game up in one computer and as soon as it got to a point where you could choose characters and play the game you pop the original disc out, put the copy in, and you can still play it through. So we, every Christmas we play through uh, doing a local area game, and we played through it with each other, and it was really good. Um, I enjoyed playing as the mage, or the sorceress, the paladin, the druid, and the necromancer. Um, my brother enjoyed playing the uh, Barbarian and Necromancer, and I think also the Rogue as well. And also later on when they came out with the um, Lord of Bale um, expansion, I enjoyed playing the Monk and the Demon Hunter. I played, I pretty much played through all, all the Diablos. I played 1 and 2 and 3, and the Immortal that came out on the, Andro or on the Android, and I know that they're already coming out with the fourth version of Diablo as well, so so to see how that story goes out. Because I, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy 3 a whole, whole lot, because the fact that it was this, almost the same thing, that in 1, Diablo dies, you drive, drive the stone into... The hero drives the soul stone into his head. He becomes Diablo. That begins two, and then he dies. And you try to destroy Diablo soul stone in three. And Leah drives the stone into her head and becomes Diablo. It's like, will you please just stop driving the damn stones in your heads? Come on. Anyways, so that was my number one choice. If you agree or disagree with any of these, again, this is my opinion. But if there was anything that you enjoyed, please, or any other ones you thought was different, certainly please put them in the comments. Or if you enjoyed my list, you know, uh, certainly put a like on it. Either way, it's Android Gamer, Layer Days, and happy gaming!